Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to focus on writing equations of perpendicular lines. Now, when we're talking about perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. And here's what that means. If we're looking at slope as being a fraction, two lines are perpendicular, like I said, if they have opposite reciprocal slopes. And I'm first going to look at that second word, the word reciprocal. So if we had the fraction 3 fourths, reciprocal means take that fraction and flip it over. So it would be 4 thirds. But then I also have to make it its opposite, which means change the sign on it. Since our original number was positive, we're going to switch our new number over to a negative value. So starting with 3 fourths, the opposite reciprocal would be negative 4 thirds. If we had 5, now 5 itself doesn't look like a fraction, but we can turn any number into a fraction by putting it over 1. So now we're going to do the opposite reciprocal. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip that fraction over, so it's going to be 1 fifth, but then we do the opposite. We started with a positive number, so we have to make this a negative number. So it would be negative 1 fifth. If we had the fraction negative 1 sixth, to do the opposite reciprocal, so the first thing we're going to do is flip that fraction over, so the 6 ends up on top and the 1 ends up on bottom. We started with a negative number, so if we want the opposite, then we want our answer to be a positive number. Now lastly, we've got 0 0.5. And we've been dealing with fractions up to this point, but 0 0.5 is not a fraction. But what we should recognize is that 0 0.5 is the same as 1 half. So then if we do the opposite reciprocal of that, well, flipping the fraction over, we'd get 2 over 1. But then doing the opposite, we started with something that was positive, so we need to end with something that's negative. Now, as we're looking at equations of lines, if we want to give the slope for a line that's perpendicular, we're going to do that opposite reciprocal with the slope of a given line. So as we look at number one, this equation is already written in y equals mx plus b slope intercept form. So if we're trying to identify the slope of this line, we're going to look at the m value, the number in front of the x. So this line right now has a slope of 3. We want to do the opposite reciprocal because we're talking about perpendicular lines. Now this 3 doesn't look like a fraction, so I'm going to put it over 1 to give it a more fractional look. If we do the reciprocal, we would flip that over to be 1 third, but we want the opposite reciprocal. We started with a positive number, so the opposite would have to be a negative number. So the slope for every perpendicular line has to be negative 1 third. Now as we look at our second example over here, this one is not written in y equals mx plus b slope intercept form. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is rearrange it. We want to get y alone, so I'm looking at this positive 2x on the left hand side. To get rid of a positive 2x, we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. So the positive 2x and the negative 2x cancel each other out, leaving us with y equals. And then on the right hand side, we have negative 2x plus 6. Now we're going to do the opposite reciprocal slope because we're still looking at perpendicular lines. The slope of this line is negative 2. Again, we can take that negative 2 and put it over 1 so that we see the fraction happening in there. If we flip that over, the 1 will end up on top, the 2 will end up on bottom. We started with a negative number, so the opposite would be a positive number. So the slope for every perpendicular line this time is going to be positive 1 half. Now as we look at this third example, we're not given an equation to look at, we're given two points. So what we're going to have to do here is we're actually going to have to find the slope between these two points before we can determine our perpendicular slope. So the slope formula between two points says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I label my ordered pairs, my first point is my x1 and my y1. My second point is x2 and y2. So if I take y2, 5, minus y1, 8, over x2, negative 7, minus x1, which is negative 3. On top, 5 minus 8 is negative 3. On bottom, negative 7 minus negative 3. Well, that double negative turns into addition, so negative 7 plus 3 
is negative 4. These are both negative, so when you divide two negative numbers, you get a positive result there. So we get 3 fourths as the slope of our original line. Now, because we want the slope for a perpendicular line, we're going to have to do the opposite reciprocal. So first, flipping the fraction over, we would get 4 thirds. The original number was positive, so the opposite would have to be a negative value. So negative 4 thirds is our perpendicular slope. Now we're going to take this one step further. We're going to write out an equation for a line that contains the point 6, negative 4 and is perpendicular, that upside down t means perpendicular, to the line y equals negative 2x plus 5. So anytime we're dealing with perpendicular lines, we want to do the opposite reciprocal slope. So this equation that we're given is already written in slope intercept y equals mx plus b form. So we should be able to identify the m value slope by looking for the number in front of the x. This line has a slope of negative 2. The very first thing I'm going to do is take that negative 2 and put it over 1 so that we can see the fraction. Now we want the slope for our perpendicular line, so we have to do the opposite reciprocal. So first we do the reciprocal, we flip the fraction over, and then we make it opposite. The original number was negative, so we need to have a positive answer for our perpendicular slope. Now we're going to have to use this 1 half slope along with this 6, negative 4 point to write out our equation. Because we're dealing with a point and a slope, we're going to use point slope form. So remember, point slope form looks like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We already know what our m value slope is, but now we need the x1 and the y1 values to plug in, and those come from the point that we're given. So the 6 is the x1, the negative 4 is the y1. So if we take that information and plug it in, y minus the y1 value, which is negative 4, equals the m value slope of 1 half times x minus the x1 value, which is 6. On the left hand side, there is a double negative to clean up. So y minus negative 4 is going to turn into y plus 4. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 1 half. So 1 half times x is 1 half x. 1 half times negative 6, I'm going to take that 6 and put it over 1. So 1 times negative 6 on top is negative 6. And then on bottom, 2 times 1 is 2. So negative 6 divided by 2 gives me negative 3. Now I want y to be alone. I want to have a y equals mx plus b equation. So in order to get rid of this plus 4, we're going to subtract 4 from each side of our equation. The plus 4 and the minus 4 cancel each other out on the left hand side. So we get just y equals. Then we've got 1 half x, negative 3 minus 4 more is going to give me negative 7 on the back end. So we get the equation y equals 1 half x minus 7. For our next example, we want to write out an equation for a line that contains the point 9, 10 and is perpendicular to y equals negative 3x plus 4. The very first thing we want to do is figure out what slope we're going to be using. Our given line is already written in slope intercept form, so we look at the m value in front of the x. It's negative 3. I'm going to take that negative 3 and put it over 1 to see the fraction happening in there. So if we do the opposite reciprocal with that original slope, we flip the fraction over and make it its opposite. We started with a negative number, so we need to have a positive answer for our new slope. We're going to use point slope form again, so we already have the m. We're going to need the x1 and y1 from the ordered pair. So if I take that and plug that into my point slope form, which we can see right above here, we would do y minus the y1 value, which is 10, equals the 1 third m slope times x minus the x1 value, which is 9. There's no double negatives to clean up, so I'm going to go straight to the distributive property. 1 third times x is 1 third x. 1 third times negative 9, I'm going to put that negative 9 over 1. 1 times negative 9 is negative 9 on top. On bottom, 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. On the left-hand side, we haven't changed anything over there, so that's still y minus 10. 
I need to get y alone, so to get rid of the minus 10, we're going to have to add 10 on both sides of our equation. So on the left-hand side, we just get y equals, and then on the right-hand side, we get 1 third x. If we take negative 3 and add 10 to that, we're going to get plus 7. So we get the equation y equals 1 third x plus 7. Now for our last example here, we're going to write out an equation for a line that contains the point 6, 5 and is perpendicular to the line 3y plus 2x equals 9. And the problem with this one is as we look at the equation, it's not written in slope-intercept form. So before we can identify what its slope is, we first have to get that y value alone. We need to get it in y equals mx plus b form. So the very first thing I'm looking at is the plus 2x. To get rid of plus 2x, I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides of my equation. So I would get 3y equals negative 2x plus 9. I still need to get rid of the 3 in front of the y. 3y means that we're taking y and multiplying by 3. To get rid of a times 3, we're going to have to divide everything in this equation by 3. So on the left-hand side, those 3's cancel out. So we get y equals... Negative two-thirds is not reducible, so we're going to leave it as negative two-thirds x. We can reduce 9 divided by 3. That's going to be plus 3 on the back end. Now that this equation is written in slope-intercept form, it's easier for us to identify the slope of negative two-thirds. But because we're talking about a perpendicular line, we want the opposite reciprocal slope. So I'm going to flip the fraction over and make it its opposite. It was originally negative, so we need to have a positive for our perpendicular slope. So we're going to use a slope of 3 halves, and we're going to use this 6, 5 point to write out a point slope equation. So the 6, 5 is my x1 and my y1. Remember, point slope goes y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So if I plug those numbers in where they need to go, it's going to be y minus 5 equals 3 halves times x minus 6. There's no double negatives to clean up, so I'm going to distribute the 3 halves right away. 3 halves times x is 3 halves x. 3 halves times negative 6, I'm going to take the negative 6 and put it over 1. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 18 divided by 2 gives me negative 9 on the back end. The left-hand side is still y minus 5. We haven't changed anything over there yet. We do want to get y alone, though, so to get rid of this minus 5, we're going to have to add 5 on both sides of our equation. So that's going to leave us with y equals 3 halves x minus 4 as our final answer. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.